Okay, hey, we're back again. Uh, Bodie and I are back, and, and, and we've talked. Shoot, we've done enough of these, a, a, a fair amount of these videos now, Bodie, but we're going to dive in a little bit deeper, and we're going to talk a little bit more specifically about some of the data with our products and, and, and kind of more specifically phosphorus. Well, those video. at home are probably saying it's about dang time you got to the data. <laughs> so, so kicking off here, so we like to throw this out there. I, I think this is this is this is a neat chart. This is Liebig's law of the minimum, and basically what it is is that yield. It says yield is proportional to the amount of the most limiting nutrient. So that could be any nutrient out there. If that nutrient is limiting, then your yield is going to be only as good as what you can gain up to the point where that nutrient limits your yield. Uh, this also could be things like biotic and abiotic stresses, which are, are living and non-living stresses. So an abiotic stress may be something like uh, 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 compaction, or it may be a misadjusted planter or something like that. Whereas a biotic stress is gonna be any stress uh, that is biological in nature, so anything that could be of living. And so, this to me is is kind of the the, the foundation piece of of what Biodyne and BW Fusion's biology is built upon, right? Um, so we have living, breathing biology, and so if our biology doesn't change the biological respiration score of the soil, then that's not going to give you a lot of confidence that our biology is doing what we want it to do. And so if you remember from the, the, the video we did where we were talking about uh, the different soil tests and all the different values on that indicator soil test, this is the value at the very top uh, on, on the right hand side of that soil test. It's the HT3 value that is giving us a 24 hour measurement of CO2 release in the soil. Okay. And so what you're seeing here, blue bars would be treated and treated in this case is 401 plus meltdown. Spring applied 401, spring applied meltdown uh, compared to an untreated trial. And so what I really love about this graph, this is, this is the, 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 the compilation of all of our research trials from 2021 in Iowa. And what we see right off the bat is, is they took a soil sample, they took an indicator test before they made any applications, so before the meltdown, before the 401, and we see that uh, the untreated area actually had more biological respiration than where they took the, where the treated area was. So after those treatments were made, the corn goes to V4, and suddenly we see a 100% swing in biological respiration. And what that means is, is the respiration at V4 on the treated side is two times basically what it is on the untreated side. And we carry a huge advantage in biological respiration all the way out through R3. So what this tells me, this gives me confidence that our biology are alive and they're, and, they're, and they're multiplying and they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. But not only that, this isn't, this isn't short term. This is all the way out through the growing season, all the way through R3. We're still seeing a significant advantage to biological respiration with our products. So we've talked about it now. Um, an awful lot. Um, there's an initiative that uh, that Gil, one of the owners, um, is very passionate about. You're going to hear about that in a little bit. <clears throat> but we want to make sure that you understand this. Um, we talk about that we're an education company, um, and really, you know, our success comes from not hiding. Uh, we want to be transparent, transparent in data, transparent in what our microbes are, what they aren't. Um, and, and understanding, you know, for you guys to have a basic understanding of, of what the microbes are doing. So this might be a little bit of, of uh, you know, remediation, if you will, but bacteria that convert organic pea to inorganic pea are called phosphorus solubilizers. And those are bacteria that produce enzymes that break free organic phosphorus that's complexed or not plant available, making it plant available. So that initiative that Bodhi mentioned is called Free the Pea. That's, that's kind of our thing, is, is we want to make phosphorus that's not available to the plant, make that available. And so uh, this, is, this, is, this is what I love about the transparency of our company is, here's the deal. 401 has five phosphorus solubilizers in it. 501 or the meltdown, when, we, when you use those together, that has two phosphorus solubilizers in it. So we're coming to the field uh, with a multifaceted approach of getting phosphorus released and making it available to the plant. So here's some data looking at 401 meltdown of inorganic phosphorus. And so this is just a trial of treated, untreated, 401 and meltdown. We're not looking at the organic side here. We're just looking at the, at the amount of inorganic phosphorus available. And so what we see 
right off the bat is we see about a 19% increase in uh, inorganic phosphorus in the treated versus the untreated. At V12, we've got about 8%. And again, this is what I talked about with the, with the respiration uh, chart that we showed a couple slides back. At R3, 109% more inorganic phosphorus available to the plant than with the untreated. And so these biology are working season long uh, throughout the season. And the thing that I really, really am amazed by, with, with, especially with this data at R3, is I think about phosphorus as something that we really need in the plant early. And I think about something that we really want to utilize, as, especially in corn, as we're in grain field, if we're packing in starches into that, because kernel weight is so incredibly important to yield that we're making more phosphorus available deep into the grain fields, into the grain field period. And, and that's how we're adding and aiding and getting heavier kernel weights, which in my opinion, lead to higher yields. So as I look at this data, I think there's a couple things that are interesting. Uh, one, you know, Sean just mentioned, V12 is usually lines up with about a thousand GDUs, mm -hmm. give or take. Um, if you look at the, the grand growth curve or the grand uptake or the massive uptake of nutrition, um, a thousand GDUs is kind of that, that key target area. Mm -hmm. And what's encouraging about this is, is to know that those microbes are working at or before early season, like like Sean talked about, but also where it really matters, late season, thousand GDUs and beyond. Right, we've got a massive difference. The other thing to note about this is that this is not measuring uptake. This is not taking uptake into account. This is just looking at plant available phosphorus. Right, plant available inorganic P is plant available phosphorus treated versus untreated. So here's a study. Uh, this is the first year in 2019 of a first of a three year study. Um, so you can see on the left, rainfall was five to eight inches above the 10 year average. 2019, we're looking at phosphorus on the left. On the right, we're looking at 2020. Now the interesting thing about 19 verse 20 is, is five to eight inches over their average of water in 19, we know that the only thing that remains the same in agriculture year over year is that everything's different, That's right? right. That couldn't be proved out more to be fact than look at 2020 in Iowa. If you go there, they were 14 inches behind their 10 year average. So we went from a surplus to a deficit and we got there in a hurry. Mm -hmm. The thing that's interesting is, is that in 2019, when, when we would sit here and say, you know, we had conditions that were ideal, right? We know that microbes need moisture to remain active and to, to stay active. Um, you can see that. I mean, you look at the the month one, month two, month three, and month four, there's a significant advantage that the Meltdown 401 combo is bringing over the untreated or the grower standard. Move to 2020, while the levels may not be as high, that is arguably because, well, we just didn't have the moisture for it to work. Right. There still is an advantage through the Meltdown 401 combination. And for me, that's where all of this becomes real. Again, this is part of a three-year study, so you're gonna to get to see some 2021 data. You have started to see some 2021 data as well, but you can see the advantage. When we talk about phosphorus, we talk about it fairly confidently mm -hmm. because we have data like this, data like the farm that we referenced earlier that went 302 across 260, across the farm on my own home farm. You know, we have a lot of data that shows that, you know, we're pretty good at freeing the pea. Yep. So here's, this is another one. So this is the one with the three year study. And this is looking at, this is 2021 data, looking at inorganic phosphorus. So you can see that the blue bar is 401. The orange bar is meltdown. The gray bar is meltdown 401. And the yellow bar is untreated. And you can see the nutrient availability that is coming from each one of those segments. So the thing that's interesting is, is now you're looking at three years of 401 only being in the blue bar. The, the yellow bar, or the gold bar being the grower standard, mm -hmm. the meltdown being the orange bar for three years now, and the orange or the gray bar being uh, meltdown and 401 for three years. And you can see the nutrient availability. Look at R3 again and just look how it runs away. Uh, 114 pounds to the meltdown 401 versus 45 mm -hmm. on the grower standard. Fairly impressive. Super impressive.